Welcome to Movie Dropbox Podcast Review of Evil Dead Rise. My name is Rudy, along with my co-host Miguel. And uh, we wanted to go ahead and talk about Evil Dead Rise, which is rated R. Um, if you haven't seen it already, um, I will personally tell you right now, I think you need to go see it. Um, it's gory fun. It's uh, darker than what you're used to with the original uh, Evil Dead uh, movies uh, are and were. I mean, the first one was kind of darker and more serious, sort of, but this one was like really dark. Um, but I'm just going to tell you real quick, the synopsis is two strange sisters trying to survive and save their family from demonic creatures. It's written and directed by Lee Cronin, and the cast is Lily Sullivan as Beth, Alyssa Sutherland as Ellie, Morgan Davies or Davies as Danny, Gabrielle Eccles as Bridget, Nell Fisher as Cassie, Richard Crouchley as Caleb. Um, yeah, so uh, let me ask you first off, Mike. Uh, what did you think of this movie? What did you think of the movie? The movie? Well, well, when we saw it, that was the second time I've seen it. So, I mean, I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, it's a, it's a good it's a good horror movie. I mean, it's it's not perfect, but it is it is very good. I think it's for me at least. It's probably the best horror movie of the year so far. Um, yeah, I like those kinds of I like those kinds of movies where like it's a real horror movie where like something bad's gonna happen. Um, with you know, that that's that's what a horror movie is supposed to be. It's like bad stuff actually happens. Yeah, and we kind of talked about it on the Scream 6 review and not not knocking that movie in any way. I still recommend you watch it. Um, it's actually coming out on like Blu-ray and streaming and stuff soon. So I, I would say check scary. that one out. Yeah, oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. So I would say check that one out. But one thing that that franchise or at least that last movie did that um, I don't know if it's a trend or maybe it just happened for the Scream franchise, but it's sort of a happy ending in a sense where it's just like I mean I get it it's resolved but the way Evil Dead Rise is resolved as opposed to Scream 6 yeah it's Evil Dead Rise is a lot more dire and like it's a dark. horror movie ending it's a proper horror movie ending to me mm -hmm. um but let me ask you what do you think of the the beginning uh and the end, like the wraparound, what'd you think about that? Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess it was fine. <laughs> I wasn't like, I mean, it was cool what happens in the beginning in the cabin. And then you find out that that's actually like, it's not the beginning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it, it's fine. It's just, it, that's not, that's like the only like, small small little thing about the movie that I was like eh. you know it, it could have yeah could have been yeah. done you know, differently I mean, like I don't want to gripe on it because it, the, the movie's really good and I, I highly recommend it if you like horror movies go watch it it's a good horror movie it's it's and if you if you're an evil dead fan like I am that it's even it's even more of a reason why you should watch it, you know yeah, so I'll give That's my right. quick synopsis on the, the whole thing where it's like, well, just Evil Dead movies in general. It's just, there's a book of the dead. Um, I don't think in this case it's the Necronomicon, right? It's a whole other book. No, it's just it's still and the Necronomicon. It's still the Necronomicon. Yeah, what but, they said was in the movie, I, I mean, might as well get into it, but mm -hmm. what they said was that there's three volumes of it, which is really cool because that means that like, the evil, the original Evil Deads, the Evil Dead that came out in I think it was twenty thirteen, mm -hmm. and then this one, they're all like, they're all kind of linked because it's three mm -hmm. different volumes. So that's mm -hmm. that one, and uh, the one before it, and then this new one. Yeah, and that's not really a spoiler. I would just say that's more context into this world. Um, basically, these books can possess people. Um, and release demons, I guess, that possess them and is trying to unleash all evil into the world. Mm -hmm. um, 
but uh, that's the synopsis of just Evil Dead in general as a whole. And so it's like they're trying to find a way to reverse things. And as you can tell from the past, that never works out ever. Nah. Which makes <laughs> um, those movies fun. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Especially Army of Darkness, which is one of my favorite films of all time. Oh, I think. But yeah, that's probably my favorite <laughs> one. Of, and and people are like, it's funny because, and it's weird. It's more happened recently where people are kind of trashing that one for some reason, which I don't understand. Um, but it, you know, eh, that's just that's just dumb. Army of so, Darkness. By no means, Army of Darkness is a horror movie. It's no. it's a great adventure comedy movie. It with just some, happens to with be with some sequel. horror in it. Yeah, yeah with some well, horror very, in it. Yeah, there's some small very horror. Very little. It just happens to be a sequel to a horror comedy movie. Uh, that's and if what you that's look, yeah, and if you look at the original, uh, I still call it the trilogy. It's like the original Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two, and uh, Army of Darkness. If you look at it, mm-hmm. in a way, it was transitioning into that because at first it was Evil Dead was the first one. And yeah, so it was a lot darker, a lot horror. more serious. Yeah. yeah straight up horror. And yeah. the Evil Dead 2, which has the humor into it, but a lot more Bruce Campbell into it. Also, uh, like, same gore. Uh, a lot of gore. A whole yeah. lot of gore. And so it became, yeah, it became a horror comedy, which is just, which is awesome. I, but yeah, it brought I, some... I liked it. Yeah, it brought some absurdity and fun into it, you know? Yeah. And uh, a lot of humor, you know? Mm-hmm. And then three is, which is Army of Darkness, is just straight Bruce being Bruce. Um, somebody called this like their victory lap for Sam Raimi and uh, Bruce Campbell. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like that, actually. It's not to me. It's not a dig to me. It's just like everything we've done has built up to this. Yeah. And um, it's just a fun time, man. It's yeah, just a Army fun action movie. You go to yeah. see Army of Darkness because of Ash. <laughs> Cause there you go. Bruce Campbell. Yeah, yeah his character yeah. is really really good <laughs> he's, yeah he's it's, it's great but um in this movie uh getting back to evil dead rise though um mm. there was a lot of gore but i didn't feel it was and it wasn't it's weird to explain but the brutality of this one compared to evil dead 2013 mm. um so i mean this isn't really spoilers um but like in the Evil Dead 2013, it's like there's scenes with nail gun, right? The nail gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's a scene where somebody's cutting themselves with like glass, right? So there's like a few scenes that where there's pr- like brutality. There's an arm severing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's two arm severings. Yeah. And um, there's brutality in that one, you know? And, and mm-hmm. this one there was gore and there was torture but i didn't feel it was as bad i guess they still get put through a lot especially the poor little kid mm-hmm. yeah. it's uh you know it's basically uh i mean we can just kind of run through the story real quick it's basically a mom who's uh what is it lily sullivan she's beth is that the mom I, I don't. I, <laughs> you remember? I don't remember the actress's names to be honest. With you. Not yeah, yet, so, at least until yeah. I watched the movie like a couple times. And, yeah, I've only seen it once. You got you got one on me, but um, yeah. So just basically, the mom, the mom with three kids living in a, an apartment that's gonna get broken down. Mm-hmm. That used and, to be a bank, <laughs> and the I guess you can call her like the screw up sister, who's a roadie. Um, she. No, she's a groupie. Fi- or she's a groupie, but she calls herself a roadie. They call her a groupie. So yeah, I don't, I don't know where you think the truth lies there, but um, it's just a joke. <laughs> and, yeah. So anyway, she's finds out she's pregnant, and so she goes to visit her sister with the three kids, mm-hmm. and uh, pretty much saying like, "I need your help. I need your advice." But when she gets there, there's an earthquake, mm-hmm. and because um, it's LA. Yeah, because it's LA. Which is a good catch because I was going to ask you that too. I'm like, that was supposed to be LA, right? I wasn't yeah. too sure. You didn't notice they mentioned Puente Hills? You know what? I, and that's what I was going to bring up because I remember hearing Puente Hills. I like, wait, does that mean it takes place here? Yeah. I thought that was really cool, man. Yeah. Okay, so it was here. Okay. So, was so I, I just wanted you to confirm it before I made a fool of myself. Well, I mean, I always make a fool of myself, but that's beside the point. Well, we have um, to <laughs> go for it. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's an earthquake. Um, well, before let's backtrack a little. So the um, the the screw up sister, the the roadie groupie, she wants to talk to her sister, and so she sends the kids out for pizza. Mm-hmm. And when they come back, there's an earthquake. A hole in the ground opens up. Uh-huh. Hint, hint. The director Lee Cronin, his movie before this was called A Hole in the Ground, I think, or Hole in the Ground. <laughs> So they literally, literally did that, which I think is hilarious. You know, to me, that's like, it's a little bit of cheese, but I like cheese and horror. So it is what it is. But anyway, so the hole opens up. The kid Danny goes down there and they keep saying, hey, get out of there. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. But they're all kind of, I'm not going to say they're screwed up, which they kind of are. But I think it's more all these characters in this movie are flawed. And I like when there's flawed characters. I don't like when they're like picture perfect and like everything's like, oh, you know, they didn't deserve that or something. I prefer when they're flawed, like everybody's flawed um, because it shows humanity to me. I don't know. But although it is sometimes cool when it's like sometimes it's just the wrong place, wrong time. That is cool every now and then. But I like when they're flawed characters. Anyway, so Danny goes in the hole. Uh, he sees there's all kinds of warning signs telling him not to go in. Of course, he goes in anyway um, and finds this book. And so that book is basically what kicks everything off and launches everything into... Uh, well, the book and the records. And the records, yeah. Which I give them props because, I mean, it doesn't sound like much, but the kid Danny is into like DJing and like... I guess they like, you know, do what a kid would do is like they picture they're in front of a crowd, you know, whether you think you're in a band and you're like pretending to play in front of like thousands of people. But in this case, they think they're Danny thinks he's DJing in front of like whatever, you know, thousands of people. Um, But anyway, because he's a DJ, he gets to play the vinyl that was in that hole along with the book Mm -hmm. as he's flipping through the book. Um, and so he has to like speed it up a little bit because it's kind of not making sense. And then did you catch, did you catch the cameo whose voice that was? I think, no, but what I was going to say, I don't think he sped it up. I think they were playing it backwards, weren't they? Oh, is that what it was? That's what I thought they were doing. I thought they were playing the record backwards. Oh, see, I thought they were speeding it up. No, because they slowed down. You might might be right because it sounded slow. And yeah. then they well, they did something where they're manipulating well, they, they, it either yeah, way. You record. might be right though. It, <laughs> no, I think or, it's cooler if it was backwards. I, I think it's cooler if it is backwards, honestly. Because I thought I thought so too. Because I was like, oh, they're doing that thing where, like, remember you play records backwards and there's like hidden messages. <laughs> in, or, but, oh but yeah, who knows? like kids, huh? not. or who yeah. knows? Anyway, but yeah, so the kid starts playing the record. Mm-hmm. The books starting to do weird stuff, mm-hmm. and. uh I you guess say something I, about it. Somebody's voice. Oh yeah, one of the voice of the priest uh-huh. was Bruce Campbell. It was. Mm-hmm. Okay. They I thought he was. It. I thought he was the bum on the street that was that they were trying to call. <laughs> no, because I, I had heard that he was he had a cameo in the movie, and I kept looking for him, and I I thought he was actually going to be in the movie. I didn't know it was just going to be his voice. That's that's why I thought he was the bum on the in the alley, but okay, that's, that's he, he was a priest in the recordings. I don't know if he's the main one talking, but they said it's a priest because I would thought I would have recognized his voice. Yeah, I, I thought so too. You know what I mean? No, he has a very distinct voice. Yeah, I didn't recognize it. So. But anyway, so Danny plays the music, and his sibling, the older sibling, goes, "Please stop, Danny! Please stop! Don't do this! Don't do this! Something doesn't feel right," and you know. Danny no, was annoying well, me the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, you're, you're you're getting ahead of yourself. No, I think Danny just shows her the book and then she tells him to put it away. Yeah, and because he's a you know he's a little shit. He doesn't listen, <laughs> and instead of it's not instead of not putting the book back where they're supposed to because they can't leave, he plays the records after the sister's gone. Yeah, and that's when all hell breaks loose because okay, that's that's when. Uh, uh, the records start chanting the um, 
the words in, in the book. Yeah. That were transcribed in the book. Yeah. And then all hell breaks loose. And, yeah, uh, basically the mom is... Uh, was she in the hallway or something? Or what she was she in the get? elevator. I'm trying to remember. Oh, she's in the elevator. That's yeah. right. Because then they do something that which is a really cool callback to... Um, oh, yeah. The, the tree scene. To the tree scene and uh, the original movie, right? In the original well, Evil I mean, Dead? Or was they it... Did it because yeah, they, they kind of did it in Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, two. and the remake in 2013, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. This so one... This, time this just, one did... Yeah. <laughs> this one they took it easy on uh because well, it is they they wanted it to purposely feel like a violation you know of body and soul i think but i think this time they're like hey let's let's ease up on that let's pump the brakes you know what i don't know if they did though i think they just cut away so that they would they wouldn't show that that's what happened because we didn't actually see what happened after it tied her up so I okay. So then, what you know they probably what I mean? did was a smart through editing techniques. They probably did a smart way to like um, not show it, but they infer it. For those of us that know the original movies and even the remake, you know yeah. what's pretty much basically happening. But for other people, they're like, oh, it just wrapped around and then possessed her. But when she's in the elevator, all these wires came in and practically wrapped around her and basically possessed her. You know. In a in a violent way. <laughs> in a violent way, yeah. Well, yeah. That's what happened to all the other ones. Um, the other ones, yeah. And then uh, the sister, she's in the house or in the apartment that's basically about to be condemned, and it's not a lot of people there, and it's a real like you know, it is what it is. It's a shithole. <laughs> it's it's a dump of a place. Yeah. And so um, the sister is looking for her well she's looking for her sister right and so she's just like uh hey um where's um or the kids are asking where's mom where's mom and so they're walking around the house looking for her and then they find her and she's cooking and uh they show it in the trailers um but she was cooking eggs, but like in a really creepy way. Oh, so the mom is Ellie. I'm sorry if I'm screwing this up. <laughs> Ellie is the mom, which is Alyssa Sutherland. Well, and dude, um, I mean, are, were we just going to go through the whole movie or like, I don't. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I was, I was just trying to build up to where it all begins. All I was trying to build up to is where, where everything begins. So basically when she's cooking is when everything begins. And that's all I was trying to build up to is walking through to that part. Um, I mean, but, I mean, technically, it just begins right with the hole in the ground, dude. <laughs> that's when it actually, that's when it actually kind of, because that's when you like you already know what's gonna happen. Yeah. The the whole, and again, I mean, this is just more of a modern horror movie thing, is but like um, the whole beginning with the stuff in the in the lake in the cabin. Mm -hmm. Was just like a oh hey, look this is what, this is this is what you can expect in the movie to be, and then the rest of the time until the mom actually got possessed was all just like oh these are the characters this is this is what you should feel for them and this is why you should you should want you know t you know for them not to happen and nothing bad to happen to them right you know? yeah. Um, because I mean that's 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 really where it kicks off, dude. That earthquake. Who knows if that earthquake even happened because of LA? What if it happened just because, you know, it was time for them to find that book? You know? Yeah. It's it's, yeah. it's just it, it seems like that's that's where it's like now you know, uh oh, something's gonna happen. Because there's a hole in the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a hole in the ground. That I will thing. say though, mm -hmm. I will say at that very beginning, not to jump back, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to say even though um, the beginning really had nothing to do... I mean, it did kind of have to do with the story. Uh-huh. Um, that was a great uh, title crawl intro. See, and then I feel like when we were and talking about And we can see spoilers, so... Yeah, I feel like <laughs> we talked about this, remember, after the movie, and I feel like they only did it just so that they could do that title crawl. <laughs> the beginning... So I think that's she's that's, literally rising from the water as evil dead. 
and so it's Evil Dead Rising. And that's what I told you. And then you see it pop up, the Evil Dead Rising title crawl, which was awesome. And I just said, would it be too inside baseball? Would it be too, like, eh? I don't think people would catch that if you just showed her rising out of the water because it is the Evil Dead Rising out of the no, water. No, it's Evil Dead Rise. Or Evil Dead Rise. Yeah. Sorry. But, you know, do you think that's too on the... I mean, they have to show the title, right? Like, every movie, they have to show the title. I just think well, there yeah. was their clever way of doing it. Um, And then it wraps yeah. around to... Yeah, you know. and then like I said, I mean, it, the 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 beginning is cool, but I I still think the other one did it better. Yeah, and because, we kind of talked about this before. Yeah, but I think a more appropriate ending. I mean, it's probably your idea, but the more appropriate ending would have been to show beginning with the priest. Oh, in the and beginning, if, yeah. Because the recording has a bunch of priests talking about how, oh, so it was a possession or something that they were they were trying to convince the church or no. something. What they were, what they I was were confused they, about that. Okay, so they found the book, mm-hmm. or they and then they said it's like one volume of three, and they said we want to transcribe the book, and the, That's and what the it church was. didn't want to let them do yeah. it. Yeah. So then those three priests said. We're going to do it anyways. <laughs> yeah. Remember? That was it. Yeah. So then they went and, and then on the next recording is them transcribing the pages of the book. And then he, and then on the, I'm not sure if it's on that one or if they listen to the other recording, but on one of them, the priest says, well, I transcribed it and the, read the words. And now the other two priests that were helping me are possessed. And I had to take them out. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Oh Yeah. And you know what that means. If it's an Evil Dead movie, they have to cut them up into pieces. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're supposedly, at least according to uh, the Evil Dead 2013 movie, where they said the way to keep or, I guess, cleanse them is to burn them. Yeah. To dismember them. them. Oh, that's right. Chop them up into pieces, basically. Mm-hmm. And then the third way was bury them alive. Yeah. Yeah. And so, on this one, it was weird because one character gets burned, Mm -hmm. but yet they still lived. Could it be maybe because they didn't bury him? Because I think that I think the priest might have said something about burying them in in, uh, what's what's that called? Um, uh, Like almost like on holy ground. What is that called? Um, Oh, gotcha. I know what you're saying. He said something like that. Yeah, but it, it, might, it could also it be that be. that person wasn't tied down, so they That's gotta like true. fully, yeah. So maybe they weren't fully; mm-hmm. they were just extra, extra crispy. They weren't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they didn't. Uh, <laughs> they weren't completely they cleansed. Weren't completely, yeah, they weren't completely. Yeah, dead. they just burned them a little bit. But um, <laughs> and then there's a really cool scene: the the eyeball scene. Oh, call back to yeah to Evil Dead Two. I thought that was cool. Yeah, it's, to somebody else, they're like, that looked kind of corny or cheesy, but it's a callback to Evil Dead, no, too. No, I don't think it did. I think it's just, it's just funny. It's just, it's yeah. funny because it's like, it had, it had comedy, but it didn't, that's the only thing that's a little odd, because the movie's supposed to, it feels a little serious, and then when the comedy kicks in, it's like, that's what I think might confuse some people. They're going to kind of be like, that's kind of weird, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it gets it gets it gets really wacky sometimes. All right, all right. So let let's get to the meat and potatoes of this. So, Go for um, it. so according to Rudd, your brother, mm-hmm. um, he says that the demon sounded like Owen Wilson. Just the mom. Yeah. Now, <laughs> the now, mom. did you know it's messed up? The second time I saw the movie, I heard it <laughs> when she says. When she says that line, "Mommy's with the maggots now." Yeah, but if you listen to the where she says at the end when she says, "Mommy's with the maggots now," yeah, you kind of hear Owen Wilson a little bit. Wow, yeah. wow, <laughs> could be wrong, but I mean, if people go out there and watch it now, when you when you watch it, or even if you watch the trailer, watch the trailer again, and then 
watch that scene because it's in the trailer and then you kind of hear some Owen Wilson in there and the messed up part is the second time we went to see the movie I could hear it now that's why I was like oh you bastard <laughs> you put that in my head now so now I hear it oh man yeah so what do you guys think do you think uh, the possessed mom sounded like uh, Owen Wilson let us know down in the comments I'm curious or on Twitter but or both why not just but um, I just thought that's funny yeah because now I want to watch it a second time and see or listen for myself yeah um so they kind of interviewed uh, Lee Cronin, the director, on this. But where do you take the franchise from here? What do you What do you think they're gonna go next? They're gonna go with the priest, or, or they gonna try uh, to continue the story? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know where they're gonna go with it. Uh, I hope that they're just gonna put the other two main characters in a movie together with with this one. Start tying them together. Yeah, that'd be cool. And I that's what I'm hoping. That. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, that's what I'm hoping. Um, but again, like, I mean, who knows? I, I don't know. I heard something about maybe making a prequel with the priests. Yeah. And that's fine. I personally, I'm not really a fan of prequels. I I, I just really don't yeah. like it. I just don't like it doing that. It causes too many problems. Yeah. Uh, linear wise, like, and then, and then you try to tie things in. And yeah, yeah I, I'm not a big fan of those either in general. Yeah. So I mean, um, it's a cool. I guess it's a cool idea. I think instead of a prequel, they should have just shown those priests in the beginning of this movie. I agree. I and think then, that that would have been a much better intro. Yeah, and then if they wanted to do that whole thing at the end, show them how those kids ended up at the cabin possessed. I mean, that's fine. That would have been a cool ending. Yeah, that would have been a cool ending. But yeah. Anywho, um, one last thing I was going to bring up before we uh, kind of wrap this one up Go is I uh, think in any future films, they're going to have Bruce Campbell actually like physically like present. Or do you think that steals too much from these characters and the story they're trying to tell? Yeah, I think it steals too much because... Uh, <laughs> Because his character is so good in the Evil Dead movies. Um, and then he was good in Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Like, so it might. I mean, if done correctly, I mean, you can give them all. Like, it's it's sort of like, oh, you know what? It's sort of like, remember when you went to see um, uh, Spider-Man? Uh, what is it? Um, the last one with Andrew Garfield. No and, Way Home. Uh, no Way Home. And then, uh, and then Toby came out, and Andrew Garfield, sort of like that. So just kind of imagine that that's kind of, kind of what it would be like, sort of. Yeah, where it's like uh, too much fan service in a sense. Sorta. Yeah. yeah. But then I mean, but then also not really because I don't know how much fan service it would be other than to the real hardcore fans of the franchise. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know how the um, the younger, newer generations of horror fans, how, how they feel about um, not just the old franchise of Evil Dead, but the new direction and if they even want Bruce or... I don't know if they want to put peanut butter in their chocolate, if that makes any sense. Like, they don't want to mix up the two because this one's trying to be so serious and dark. I think what you meant was to say was uh, cupcake and chili. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know, dude. It's, it's hard to try to get, try to get like, a, um, try to gauge what, what, what they think, you know? And like I said, I mean, some people apparently don't like Army of Darkness. They say it's it's not like Evil Dead because Evil Dead's supposed to be gory, and then uh, and then some people really like the new one and say that it's better than all of them put together. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. Everyone has different tastes. Yeah. I think what it really really comes down to, honestly speaking, and this goes back to just just from what I've noticed myself, whichever one of these movies you saw first, usually usually becomes your favorite one. I, 
at an early age didn't watch any of the Evil Dead movies. I the first one I saw was Army of Darkness. After I saw Army of Darkness, I loved that movie. So then I wanted more. So then I found out, oh well crap, this is actually a sequel. Like there's actually one before this. And then after that, you know, then oh there's actually another one that this is a remake of. And then I looked that up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I imagine, who knows, dude, what if people didn't even come into those ones? What if they just saw like Ash versus the Evil Dead and then they're like, oh, this show's great. Oh, there's movies that take place before this, mm -hmm. you know? And then yeah. there's some people that, younger people that probably saw the, the 2013 one. And then they're like, mm -hmm. oh, this movie's great. Like, this is so cool. Like, I've never seen a horror movie like this. And then maybe they'll go back and see what, where did this spawn from? Or, yep. And then the new generation, some of them who've never even heard of the Evil Dead, and they're just like, oh, I just want to go watch a horror movie. I'll go watch Evil Dead Rise, and then, oh, yeah. man, this horror movie's really good. So yeah. It's, yeah, dude, so, I mean, as long as, as long as you like horror movies, go watch this one. <laughs> yeah. If you're a horror fan, um, if you're an Evil Dead fan, yeah. new school horror fan, old school... I still highly recommend this one. Grab a big bucket of popcorn, uh, grab yourself a soda, and uh, just have a great time. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, yeah. They did some crazy stuff with it, some fun stuff, and um, you know, I, I really like the the tone. They they did very little jokes, but um, yet there's a few tiny moments of humor. But um, yeah, I really dug this movie. And I really dug the 2013 one as well. But I would highly recommend you guys go check out Evil Dead Rise. Yes. Uh, still playing in theaters. Um, please support movie theaters. Um, and this one with the sound design, by the way. Whew, the sound design was really good, man. Um, the glass seating scene, just everything. There's so many so, there's so many little scenes that like the sound design was like chef's kiss, dude. Glass eater. <laughs> Glass it, Eater. It reminded me of The Simpsons. There was a magazine called <laughs> you're Glass Eater. Bring that up. Well, because you remember Glass <laughs> Eater, right? Yeah. They had a so goofy like fish. guy eating glass. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's going to remind me of The Simpsons. There you go. As long as it's a good one. But anyway, <laughs> uh, wrapping this one up, uh, what do you guys think? Did you see Evil Dead Rise? Uh, were you on the fence on it? Uh, we say to go check it out. It's a great time at the theater. And um, written and directed by Lee Cronin. The cast is pretty awesome. Um, I've heard yep. some people kind of bash on some of their acting for whatever reason. But no, I thought they were all great. I thought they are fine for what they were, you know? Um, yeah, see, it's, it sucks. Yeah, it's, I, didn't, I didn't notice anything like that. At least acting-wise, I thought everyone did a really good job. I just feel, and, and I got to say this before we wrap this up, is I feel like... Some people just go into a movie wanting to hate it yeah. or nitpick everything. Whereas you and I, you know, just like back in the day, we went to a movie just to watch a movie and enjoy it. Yeah. And if you're looking for bad things, you're going to find it. You know That's what I true. mean? And so it's just like, just go in any preconceptions you have of the movie or anything you think the movie is, leave it at the door. And just as we like to say on the movie Dropbox podcast is just go for the ride, you know? Just let it take you and, uh, you know, like you said, let it, you know, just go for the ride. And uh, you always say, and the ride's a fun one. And in this case, I think it is. So that'll do it for us here at a Movie Dropbox Podcast. Um, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe down at the bottom. And get notifications. And uh, we're also on Twitter at, uh, at Movie Dropbox Pod. And uh, we have a podcast as well, aside from uh, YouTube. So um, check us out. Give us a like, comment, and um, yeah, check out Evil Dead Rise. <laughs>